Hey guys, welcome back to Ebbs and Flows, where we talk about the highs and lows on and off the field. Today, joined by Titan Superstar and one of my favourite players to watch, JC, baby, what's up? Hey, um, bro, obviously um, off-season at the moment, what have you been up to? So you've got some new ink, what's been happening? Nah, just chilling, eh? Yeah, bit of new ink, um, trying to get back into the gym. I uh, can't really do too much with my knee, but uh, yeah, enjoying it. How's the recovery going? Yeah, it's good. Um, frustrating at times, but um, yeah, can only do what I can do. Yeah, um, I've seen you boys down in Sydney, had a pretty big night at, at the Beach Road <laughs> Hotel and got to have a beer with you and um, been, been mates with Phil for a little while. So uh, what was your thoughts on Sydney, cruising around with the boys? How was it? What yeah, it's different, eh? Um, we were down there for UFC and um, got down there a day early and we're like, fuck, might as well get on it, and, uh, <laughs> have a few drinks. And then um, pretty sure Simi... Hit up one of my mates and we ended up uh, at the beach, beach road hotel. But I loved it. Loved different, it. Different, different up here, but I loved it. <laughs> Obviously, single, good looking dude. You try and get them eyes out of it. Always wearing nah. outfits. <laughs> nah, nah, not me. <laughs> um, uh, obviously, uh, let's we'll talk about your season this year. In my opinion, I thought you had a really great season. What was your thoughts on your season? Yeah, it was different. Um, obviously, coming off the bench um, most of the year. Um, but yeah, a little bit different. I, I, I really liked this year. Um, I learned a lot, and um, yeah, I'm just keen for next year. What um, when you sort of <coughs> known as a starter and you're coming off the bench? What's the sort of biggest change that you have to make? Uh, and, when, and when you come on, knowing that you can do things and knowing you can make things happen, what's the balance of like, let's, let me do my role for the team, or are you just jumping on and go, fuck it, I'm just gonna have a crack? Yeah, um, so I was a little bit different because I didn't know when I'd be on or where I'd be on. So. Um, at the start, uh, before the game, like warming up, coach would come up to me and say, just be be ready for wherever, whenever. So my mindset was a little bit different this year. So um, whenever I got on, I'd just have a crack, you know, do what I normally do and, um, yeah, do my best. What do you do when you normally, what are you doing when you're normally doing? <laughs> just play football. Yep. Hopefully not get tackled. <laughs> <laughs> try to score some tries, try to set up some. But, um, yeah, I just try, try to do my best. Um, so, like, when I watch you on the field, like, you look, like small bro and um and when we got to meet you in real life and you're a lot bigger than what i thought you thought you'd be tv uh tv's deceiving <laughs> i'd like to say that <laughs> yeah. um so like what, what's the sort of physical goals for you rolling into this do you want to put on size or are you happy with where you are because even though you're not the biggest dude like you don't like you put your body online you know you're not getting run over you're fucking hard to tackle do you want to stay the same size you want to get a little bit bigger i'd like to get a little bit bigger uh just probably a little bit more strength um you know wait for me doesn't really bother me too much, but um, obviously when you get stronger, you get a little bit more muscle mass and a uh, bit, bit of weight comes on there. But, um, you know, I just want to, you know, keep getting my body as good as it can to be the best I can. Do you want to be, like, stronger up top or through the base? or Probably through the legs, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've got no calves, so <laughs> hopefully get some calves on me, get some, get some leg strength. But, um, yeah, this year we, um, we focused on leg strength a little bit more and I could tell the difference in... Um, when I was running the ball, like breaking a few more tackles and whatnot, mm. so um, hopefully keep keep building that up. Bro, what, what does the ball bounce your way? Not too sure, eh? I think it's just luck. Can, can, <laughs> you, can you feel, can you feel that on the field though? Uh well, I remember growing up, like you played. I'd be playing games of one bounce with my cousin, where you like kick the ball and you got to try get the ball on one bounce and put the, put it oh. down before someone touches you. So, um, is that a game? Is that yeah, a game you used to play? That's a game we used to play with my cousin. So, um, I, I think that that's helped uh, a lot, but um. Yeah, most of it's just luck, I think. Can you, like, I, I heard um, Dennis Rodman talk about, I know he got some basketball, I heard him talking about, he said, pride himself on um, rebounds. He used to get his mate to shoot. And yeah. He used to try, yeah. And yeah. he said, like, over time, he said, sort of could see the ball, like, move, and he could get a good gauge on where that ball was going to be. Yeah. A little bit harder with a rugby league ball, it's like egg-shaped, it sort of wobbles around. Do you feel like you've got, are you, are you, like, when it's in the air, do you feel like you're looking at it that way? Or, like, are you just trying to put yourself in the best position? Or? Yeah, no, nah, 100%. Um, well, what I've learnt with um, torpedo bombs is if the point's coming down, that's where it's going. So you just look at where the point is. It's just when it comes down on the belly, that's when it's the t uh, toughest because that's when it floats. But, um, oh. you know, where the, wherever the point of the ball goes, that's where the ball's going. Yeah. yeah. And you just try and get yourself in the best position? Yeah, try to get under it. <laughs> Keep the feet moving. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, let's talk about that. Who do you hate? Obviously, I'm not going to say you're scared of anyone, but who are you mindful of when they're kicking the ball? Is it like Nathan Cleary? Is it like Wren? Who hits him the sweetest, in your opinion? Matt Burton. Oh, I forgot about yeah, him, bro. Yeah, Burton. So, um, 
I, I was playing 5 8 when I versed Penrith, so I've only versed Penrith once and I was playing 5 8, luckily. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have to be under the bombs, but um, oh, you made just run into you, <laughs> but um. Yeah, Matt Burton, we we played him this year and he put up about three torpies and I didn't catch one of them. Like, um, they'd be coming straight to me and then with, like, ten metres before it hit the ground, it'd swing right uh, swing right away. So they were scary to catch. But, um, yeah, probably Matt Burton's b- uh, bombs. Like, you hear people talk about him, but you don't really understand how tough it is until you actually play him. Oh. Yeah. What do you, how do you, pre- and it's hard to prepare for it because it's not like anyone can kick the ball yeah. the same way you can. Nah. Have you Have you got underneath those um, sort of machines, you know, when they sort of spit them out? No, I haven't. Uh, have um, you got under one of those? I'm not too sure if they can actually like recreate the same where the ball comes down on the belly, but oh. yeah, it'd be good to good to get something like that. Yeah. So you can get a fair bit of practice in. Or you start spraying the ball, go put some kick pressure yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> start spraying your wingers. Ah, that's yours, I thought it was yours. <laughs> um, so I've, I interviewed uh, Brimo a little bit earlier this year and I asked him what is what he thought his best position was for the team and he said fullback and obviously you're a fullback and, and he, he brought you up straight away. He goes, me and JC are boys and I think we just got to find a way that we can both be on the field. Yeah. I had Jared on here before, I asked the same question. I was yeah. like, um, if, you, if you had JC and Brimo, who would you pick? And he said, you. Um, how do you feel about that question and, and where do you feel like you lie within the Titans organisation? Yeah, is it that fullback? Yeah, it's a tough one. Like, Because um, you, you don't want to shit on the boys. Yeah, That's the hard thing, one hey. of my good mates. Um, but he's a, he's a freak at fullback. Like, um, every time he plays fullback, he's always creating something. And um, like for m- myself, um, growing up, I played a few different positions, but fullback was always my best. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not too sure where it lies. Um, you know, I'd like to play fullback. But um, at the same time, you got AJ there, and even um, Keanu Kinney coming through. He's a he's a freak. Mm. He can run the ball so well. So um, yeah, I'm not too sure where it lies. Like I'd like to play fullback, but um, as long as like me and him are on the field at the same time, I'm happy. Yeah. Um, do you want to hear what Jared thought? What Jay will think? <laughs> <laughs> he reckons Brimo for 14. Nah, he's nah, he's got to he's got to play. He's got to start. But um, yeah, who knows. Yeah, um, obviously a lot of changes within the Titans. It must be frustrating. And young guy, you, sometimes you're just sort of happy to be on the field and, and playing games and you're almost hitting up that 50. <coughs> What's it going to be like And with Des Hasler coming in? Have you had conversations with him? Yeah, I've had a like, few conversations with him. I shouldn't say a few. I've had one with him. But, um, you know, yeah, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. Excited but scared. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited for next year. Um, and the few years after that but really excited because um you know to learn off uh des he's obviously been with um brett stewart and tommy turbo really good fullback so um hopefully i can uh pick up a few few tips and all that off him and uh you know make my game better mm. where do you see the growth in your game always room for improvement everywhere um but for me it's uh probably just details of wearing to be on the field um you know defense and attack wise trying to get around the ball as much as i can so um yeah, fr- probably just a little details and defence. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm not the best tackler, but, um, you know, just... You don't shy away from it, though, bro. Yeah, no, nah, I'll, try, I'll try to get in front, but, you know, just uh, details, you know, get my uh, splits right and stuff like that, so, mm. yeah. Um, you seem to say pretty chill. Is Does that, when you jump on the field, and one of the hardest parts about playing fullback, because like you said, is the defence and organising splits and knowing when to jump in at halfway and not... Um, does the voice sort of pick up when you're on the field, or is that coming with a bit more confidence? Yeah, I remember when I first started to play, I wasn't too loud. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, I wouldn't, I'd just be pointing, <laughs> I wouldn't be saying names, but um, last year sort of started to pick up. I started to spray blokes, started to swear at them if they weren't there, but, um, you know, um, being young, I was nervous, but... I'm a bit better now. When I watch you play, it feels like you just kind of got this like cool essence about you, sort of flow, like ball bounce. Do you still get nervous within games? Do you? Yeah. yeah. But Before just the way you game, play, just looks look yeah. just looks cool. Like um, when I go back and watch the games, like you can hear the commentator say, "Oh, he just seems so relaxed when he plays, just like he's playing backyard footy." But really, I'm nervous. <laughs> as. Like before games, like when I first started to play, like I'd be throwing up before games because I get so nervous. Like that stopped. But um, yeah, I still get nervous before I play. It's bro, it's a fullbacks league right now. Yeah. Like you look at how many guys are, are doing what they're doing. Who's who's some of the fullbacks that you admire and what they do? Reese Walsh. Right? Is he so, right? so quick, so quick. Just um, his ball playing ability as well, and just um, like where he knows where to be. That's what I really admire. Um, KP, he's a freak. Um, obviously won the Dalian medal. Um, pretty much just 
top top fullback Dylan Edwards. He's another good one. I like to. He's like all to watch. he's all very different too, eh? Which yeah. is like kind of cool, which yeah. I like. See, um, like Reese Walsh, he's probably one of the best ball playing fullbacks. Easy, and then you got Dylan Edwards, who's a really good runner, and he's got a really good work rate. So, um, different, but. It's, the same at the same time Yeah I heard um, Luke Carey Talking about it On the podcast Where he said like For the past Like say four or five years Like a lot of the Fullback players Gone through the middle third So like Tommy Turbo Tedesco And they're like Physically gifted bro Like you're physically gifted Through like speed And balance But theirs is like More so through size And height and Luchel So everything through the middle But now All the younger fullbacks That are coming back in Reese Welsh Yourself KP It's starting to be out wide again and On the sort edges, of like, yeah. yeah And it's Bit of place to be, isn't it? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Heaps I mean, of room. Yeah, not bigger bod- uh, bodies there either. I mean, <laughs> you've got a few big centres, but not like the front rowers, so it's better to be out on the edges and not getting smashed. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, um, obviously we can't have a podcast without talking to your old boy, but about your old boy. Bro, when did you know that he was who he was? Like, Obviously you just grow up and he's your dad. Yeah. See, I didn't really, um, I didn't really know too much about it, you know. Like um, when he retired, like I still thought he was just, a footy player, like I didn't really. You thought he was just playing park yeah, footy for Narang and that. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't realize how like a bigger, what would you call it? Icon, not an icon, but bigger person he was. So um, when I got older and um, like seeing the stuff he did in community and stuff like that, that's when I realized he must be pretty important. So um, yeah, I always thought he was just a just my dad with a really cool job. So yeah, I wasn't really. I shouldn't say phased, but I didn't really. Like know too much about it Yeah it's just your dad yeah, Isn't just it my You just see him at home It's fine um, In terms of sort of Playing style Have you ever looked back On his own old footage And stuff mm, like yeah. that I used to watch his Sharkies um, His Sharkies tape All the time I used to love When he play, played at the Sharkies And at Penrith as well But um, yeah That was some of my My favourite highlights to watch mm. um, Does he sort of Obviously coach you around football Or does he just let you be you Right, he does my head in. I oh. ask him so many questions. Like, I'll ask him so many questions. Oh, what should I do here? Oh, what should I do there? Oh, I don't know. That's, <laughs> you're just quiet as, eh? Quiet as. Oh, do you think I had a good da- uh, good game, Dad? Yeah, you're all right. Like, he doesn't doesn't give me much. But um, this year he's been a little bit better. Like, um, talking about, like, tactical sort of things, like planting the seed and stuff like that. But um, What do you mean by planting the seed? Oh, just like a little grabber in behind. Um, you know, just... To get the defense thinking, what you're going to do and stuff like that. So um, throw the winger off early so you can zip it over him yeah, later. Stuff yeah. like that. So um, this year's been a little bit better, but the first, my first two years, he was doing my head in. I just wanted, it, I just wanted advice, and he wouldn't give me much. Uh, I, I kind of like that. Maybe he just wanted to just be your dad. Eh? Well, that, that's why that that was his reason behind it. He just wanted me to, you know, be me, um, do my thing. But at the same time, I just wanted help. Mm. But um, yeah, he's gotten better this year. Um, so I, I looked at like. I look at you play now and I thought you were just like, – I thought you were going to be like 16s, 18s, rep sides, all that sort of stuff. You didn't pick up a training child to – So 2019. 2019. So I was 19 years old. Um, were you – what happened as a kid? Did you start playing as a kid? Yeah, I, I, I played since I was like four years old, but I never really grew until I was like 16. So um, I was pretty low on confidence growing up as a kid. Um, and I didn't really – I wouldn't say I didn't take footy seriously, but – I never really put in the work that I did until I started playing Mau Meninga. Um, yeah, I never made any rep sides or anything like that. And then 2018 come around where, you know, junior club footy sort of goes out the window and um, played Mau Meninga. So like 18s up here for Burley. And um, yeah, that's when I sort of got picked up through the junior system for the Titans. And then 2019 had a really good year playing Colts. And then, yeah, got a training trial deal. Mm. Bro, like like I said before, like I was like, oh, I went to, done a little deep dive, and I was like, I thought you'd just been like 16, 18 sort of superstar, but you come good a little bit later. Yeah, I was a late bloomer. Yeah, I remember the highlights package that come through a couple of years ago, and it was like, oh, this is like Preston Campbell son, and we shared it on the YKTR sports page as well. Um, but I remember that I was like, oh, the same thing. I was like, oh, he's been doing this his whole, his whole life. Yeah. Well, see, that was buzzy because um. You know, I made that just so my family down south could see could see me play because I normally can't travel up to watch. And then, not even two days later, Blake on a bar shared it, and yeah. you guys shared it. <laughs> I was like, Far out! This is, this is hectic. But um, yeah, everything sort of took off pretty quickly for me since since that. Did it feel? Did you feel like a lot of pressure? Not really. I mean, the only person that 
I felt pressure from was myself. You know, I, I like I expect a lot of things from me. So um, yeah, I, it was pretty much myself just putting pressure on me. Mm. Um, obviously, rolling into the Titans, yeah, and your dad is who he is at the Titans. What was that like? Scary. Like I, I remember uh, rocking up for my training trial, and you had like Jay Wall there, Nathan Peets, like all the big dogs. So I got really nervous. Like people I seen on TV, and, um, but then like the boys were pretty welcoming, and um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Mm. Debut. Yeah, went good, bro. Went good. My first <laughs> first touch, I dropped the ball. <laughs> it's all right, bro. It's nah, all right. nah. I, I, I loved it, eh? Um, was it scary getting? Obviously, when you hear Melbourne and. Like, when I grew up, oh, when I was playing football, bro, when you play Melbourne, like, fuck, we're just going to lose. Like, that's almost what we thought of. You go up against one of the best teams over the course of history on your debut. Yeah, well, see, I was pretty lucky when we were storm because they, they were missing a few players due to origin and yeah. all that. So, um, you know, that sort of gave me a little bit of confidence. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I loved it. It's a night I won't forget. And, um, yeah, probably one of my best memories. Do you, that um, scene when it sort of swings to your dad and stuff as well, that must, must be something that's going to live with you for a long time? He tried to hide up on the back of the hill yeah, so they wouldn't yeah, see they, him. They, they but they ended up finding him somehow. <laughs> Someone must have pointed him out to the cameraman. But, yeah, um, seeing all my family up on the hill was, was really good. Seen a few signs, all my mate, all my mates were drunk as. But, um, yeah, I loved it. Was well, that your mates that are down at the Vici too? Is that your little crew? Yeah, yeah, it's my... Um, one of my mates and a few of his friends, but, yeah, they're a good crowd to be around. <laughs> yeah. um, bro, I, I talked with j Well just before about, um, obviously, Gold Coast, beautiful place to grow up, but, like, when I come up here, to me, it sort of feels like a holiday. Yeah. And trying to find that balance of being a professional footballer and not getting caught up in, in the lifestyle, is that something that gets talked about at training or is that something your boys talk to you about? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's been one of those things, like, we haven't really talked about it much at training because, you know, we live here and all that, but um, I can understand what people think that is, you know, uh, my first few years, and even now, like, I'm still learning the balance between it, and, um, but, you know, coming with age as well, me getting older, I think I've, I'll start growing up a little bit more and, um, you know, finding that balance between being a professional and, you know, having a good time up here, but... Um, Line dancing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good night. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I'll, I'll end up finding that balance soon. Um, you know, footy comes first, so it'll start being good. Mm. You, you look at your tight end side, um, you've got enough, enough there to do something. What are the guys like Tino and that sort of mean towards the team and what's he sort of like as a leader? Nah, Tino's good. Um, frustrates me sometimes, though, because if we lose a game, he... Puts it all in, puts it all on himself, and I'm like, brother, it's a, like it's a team sport. It's all of us. So that's the only thing that frustrates me about him. But um, besides that, he's a great leader. You know, he tests all the boys. Um, he knows when to like switch on. Like he knows when to have a good time with the boys, like have a laugh and all that. And then he knows when to switch on and during train uh, during training. So I love having Tino as a leader, and um, you know, he's really important to our club. And then boys like Davey and uh, Maui as well. Really important. Knows so. a guy, bro. He bro. can. Fly. He's, he's, he's a freak. freak eh? He's got an engine. Yeah. Like, I don't know how he does it. Takes so many carries and many tackles. That many tackles, but um, yeah, he's a freak. Well, he probably doesn't get spoken about enough because obviously, like, he'd be up there with, with some of the best props in the game, bro. What's he like, sort of off the field, and or is he just quiet on? Quiet and as. <laughs> yeah. quiet I as. thought so, bro. Quiet I thought as, that was man. gonna be him. Like, he's funny, but yeah, he's just quiet off the field, like. If you say a little joke to him, he'll, he'll laugh and all that, <laughs> and he'll say something back. But besides that, he's pretty quiet. Yeah. Um, Dave Fafi, obviously, pretty big boost. You guys sort of re-signing. Tino's on for 10. He locks in for another three. Does that sort of give all you sort of young guys a lot of confidence? Slash, I look at the Broncos side a couple of years ago. They probably weren't performing at the level they're at now, but they all sort of had that little little pack that they all could sort of grow together. Yeah, 100%. we got like that um, core group now. There's a few of us there. Um, signed to like 2026 Tino signed to like the rest of his <laughs> life But <laughs> yeah nah It's good to have that cool little group You know start gelling and all that um, Through the next few years And hopefully Hopefully we can do the same as the Bronx You know um, Get to the finals And who knows grand final It'll be good Oh man I always think about it eh? Like if the Gold Coast can get that done Wow Scary Bro I'm obviously proud Indigenous man What's it, What was it like Sort of growing up Indigenous um, Your dad sort of paved the way for like a lot of the teams that have come through now yeah. is that something about culture that was installed in your house from day dot yeah it was um it was a little bit different like it's just probably the way that you know you treat your family and all that being around family um i never really 
sort of seen it that way, if you know what I mean, like being around my family and all that a lot. I didn't really think too much of it, but... You just thought it is what it is? Yeah, it is yeah. what it is, but, you know, it's... um. Uh, it was it was explained to me by my nan and pop and all that that you know that's what indigenous families are you is always together um always around each other so um yeah growing up um it was yeah it's good did you struggle with any like racist issues when you were a little bit younger no nah, not really um like you'd always get the weird eye like when i'm walking around with my dad saying yeah. it's my dad you know he's Pretty pretty dark fire and then there's myself. Mm. He's not um as dark, so you get a little bit of a weird eye. But besides that, I've been I've been pretty good, like having not having to face that, which mm. is um which I've been really lucky. But um I know other people aren't as fortunate as that. Yeah, for sure. Um, one th- one big thing I found when I come over here from New Zealand is because like because the Maori culture is quite strong back home, and I'm not saying it's perfect, and but like a lot of us who aren't Maori understood like sort of. Maori concepts and what they sort of believe in. And when I sort of come to Australia, and this was like 10 years ago, I didn't really learn too much about the Indigenous culture. And it wasn't until, like, even recently, I feel like I can make a bit more of an effort. But I think with the Indigenous, especially within rugby league, bro, because um, I find myself trying to learn about the culture a lot more. And, bro, it's a beautiful culture, isn't it? Yeah, I can see, because one of my best mates, he's, um, he's Maori, and I can just see a lot of a lot of similarities in our, in our cultures. Um, different but the same. Mm. But... Um, yeah, I'm re- I'm really proud to be Indigenous, and um, you know, hopefully, with um, what would you call it? With my profile, I can sort of, you know, teach little kids as well to be proud of themselves and their culture, and um, yeah. What do you what do you what do you like? Obviously, football's your number one, but what do you get up to outside? Bro, nothing. Nothing. I, I just relax. Eh? <laughs> you you look like a chiller, bro. Yeah, I lo- I love the fish. Um, I love to have a good time with my mates, and um, yeah, I just I just go wherever the wind takes me, really. Yeah. And but, um, yeah, and nothing, nothing too serious. Bit of golf here and there, but yeah. hit him all right. Nah, shocking. <laughs> Better than Phil. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Phil Sammy, obviously, but he'd have been gutted to miss out on this side. So uh, if he if he didn't um, hurt his foot, I th- surely he'd get be getting picked. But um, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's gutted. Yeah, I saw Bremo sort of post up for yeah. the way he did it. Yeah. I was saying that, and I was like, bro, he's injured. Come on. Um, the guy I really look, looked up to, and he's a little bit younger than me, but the way he sort of played football was Fozzie, and, and you, you get to play with him mm. um, on, on a week-to-week basis. Different character. Yeah. <laughs> he's mad, Fozzie, eh? Yeah, he's bro. Funny. But what are you learning from guys like him? Because he's pretty intense. He cares about football a lot. Yeah, uh, it's, probably, it's probably a prerequisite of what Dizzy Hester's going to be like because he's the one who brought him through. Like, yeah. what's what's guys like Fozzie teaching you? He's just helped us. Helped us all out, like um, even fellas like Tommy Weaver and all that coming through. He's helped Tanner out a lot heaps, but just having um, someone like Fozzie, like his experience out around the club has been good for everyone. You know, like he's helped Dave out a lot this year. And, um, <laughs> but what's, yeah, what's he saying to Dave? Uh, he's just he like just he's him. the first person to tell Dave what to do. <laughs> <laughs> but um, nah, I love having him around the club, and he's really good for us. Yeah, bro. Um, what's the sort of plans for the rest of the off season before you get back in? Probably just try to train as much as I can, you know. Oh, so, so you're going all the way through, are yeah, you? Yeah, try to train as much as I can. You know, um, enjoy my time off still, though. You know, I um, might go down to Melbourne for a trip, see what happens. Go see my Get mate. the races? That <laughs> oh, would be good. Yeah. I've got to, got to stay away from it, though. <laughs> trying to save up for a house. <laughs> yeah. But, um, nah, probably just in, enjoy my time off, you know. Um, you don't really get too much time to yourself when you're in pre-season or training. So, yeah, just enjoy it. Bro, what's it sort of like coming in into like a bit more money? As like you're still young, you're twenty three, bro. What's it like when you get like a bit more cash in your pocket? Is anyone sort of teaching you what to do with your money, or are you just trying to figure it out on your own? Uh, I tried to figure out uh, figure it out on my own, and then um, I was on sports bet too much. <laughs> 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 nah, but um, yeah, I've I've started to look after my money a little bit better now. I had to get a bit of help at the start, and um, you know, like I was just saying, saving up for a house now. And then after that, hopefully just start looking after mum and dad, my brother and sister, um, and, yeah, myself. So. Are you the oldest? No, I'm the middle child. I've oh, got an older sister, younger brother. Yep, How so. does the younger brother go? Does he play for you as well? Nah, he's, he's completely different to me. He loves um, playing the game and all that, but um, <laughs> I wish he would play for you. He got, he got my mum's jeans. He's a little bit thicker and a little bit uh, tall, taller than me. So Oh, really? Yeah. Good build. He's got a good build on him. So yeah. I wish he picked up footy, but... Um, yeah, he's, he's a funny character. Mm-hmm. Bro, um, obviously you're still young and like I can see you sort of think a little bit more into the future. What do you want your legacy to be? 
See, that's buzzy. I, I'm really thought about that. You know, um, I'd like to be known as one of the greatest players of my generation, but at the same time, I've still got a long way to go. Like, you can always have those aspirations, but at the same time, I know I've got a lot of work work to do. And, um, yeah, I'd like to be known as probably one of the greatest players of uh, my generation and even one of the greatest in Indigenous players to play. Who do you think is the greatest Indigenous player ever? Oh, that's a tough one. So many, eh? So many. So many to think about. That's cool because I, 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 I watch um, Latrell sort of talk about it and yeah. he says Matty Bowen. <laughs> See, I love watching Matty Bowen growing up. Because that's you, bro. Yeah, you I used to love too. watching Matty Bowen. But um, like four Indigenous players, I'd have to say, my old boy, but greatest to play, I'd have to say G.I. Yeah. G.I. Oh. was gone. Are you related to him? Yeah, so my great grandmother and his his uh, popper brother and sister. Oh wow, yeah. it's buzzy. Yeah, yeah, that's a flex as a kid. Eh? <laughs> yeah, as a kid. Yeah, Preston King was my dad. Greg Ingles was my cousin. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and then try and get the palm up. <laughs> oh, I get snapped. Um, obviously, sort of knock around, uh, knock about, oh, knockouts just finish. Um, I look at that football and I think it's mad because everyone sort of respects the culture. And when when you get someone like a Josh Addo Carr. Willing to have a fight to compromise, fame, <laughs> compromise fame for Australia, it must mean fucking a lot to the boys. Yeah, hundred eh? percent. Um, you know, I've missed out the last few years with injury and um, being away, but um, you know, boys get to go down there, represent like their community where they're from. So there's a lot of meaning and feeling in it, and um, can understand why boys sort of get <laughs> fired up. But um, yeah, I love watching the knockout. I love. Um, I haven't played in a few years, but you know, hopefully next year. Injury free and I'm still here so I can have a run. You'd have a run? Yeah, 100%. You know how big the target on your head would be? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not too sure. I'd probably <laughs> stay out on the wing or something. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'd love to play. Um, yeah, cool. fuck. I'm just thinking, I remember watching this, um, I remember when Latrell first started playing, he was like 7 or 18, and like guys were just trying to take his head off from yeah. sort of day dot, bro. And not like grabbing him and just like punching him and stuff as well. Can you throw him all right? Nah. <laughs> Shocking. I've got two left hands. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of J Wall's uh, fight on the weekend? Yeah, he did well. Did That's well. Bro, did respect well, day, yeah, respect 100%. day. Like, I'd be too scared to jump in the ring, but I've got, I got to give my um, respect to all the boys that jump in there. If they get knocked out, they get knocked out, but if they don't, yeah, hat, hat off to them. But um, yeah, I'd be too scared to jump in the ring. Hey, I can't fight to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> Me and you both. Right? Yeah, it was it was funny because like I was sort of saying just off air, like he actually thought um he tripped up and he was like he goes I went to my corner. He goes, bro, I tripped up. And yeah, like, I was watching it. Sorry, Jay, well you didn't see brother. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying that um. He deserves a lot of credit for your first year in, in football and, and scoring tries through his offloads. Yeah, he likes to say that. <laughs> he likes to say he puts grubber in, uh, grubbers in and offloads. But um, yeah, no. J Wall's probably one of the skillful, most skillful front rows I've ever played with. Bro, he is. Eh? Yeah, he's good skillful, ball skills, bro. Everything. Good for an offload. Yeah. Good for a penalty too. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that's great. Do you enjoy the sort of um, crossover before the boxing boys going, or oh, league boys going into boxing? Yeah, hundred percent. Um, Gives them something else to do besides football. Um, but, yeah, like, got to give my respect to all the boys that, that oh. do it, eh? Like, like I said, I'm too scared to jump in the ring. So, um, yeah, I love watching, the like, the footy boys going in and box. It's fun, eh? Yeah, it's fun. Um, fuck, I remember when um, Simi was fighting Hodges. <laughs> <laughs> bro, he went into a press conference, bro, and he was trying to, like, spray Hodges. So they asked him the question first, and he was spraying Hodjo, and then Hodjo just, like, replied, like, humble as, and yeah. bro, he said he felt like the biggest grong. <laughs> they said it's, like, the biggest rush, bro. It's the biggest rush. Oh, really? Obviously, born Cronulla. Yeah. Where's your allegiance? Queensland. Queensland, Yeah. I've been up here since I was uh, six, so... Oh, that, yeah, so you yeah. sort of count? Yeah, it sort of counts. It was weird, though, because old boy went for New South Wales, but all my favourite players for, play for Queensland, so like JT, Matty Bowen <laughs> yeah. and all that, so... I'm happy either way. Um, Queensland's just so much cooler, yeah, though, way. Yeah, love eh? Queensland, bro. Such a nice place, too, so... Mm. Be able to represent the people up here one day would be good. Mm. Fuck, random thought. Do you ever watch your old boy kicker conversion? My old boy? Yeah. Um, I, I remember watching... He's 2003 one. That's probably the only... It's, he just walked back, eh? Yeah. He <laughs> wouldn't, like... No wouldn't steps, take, eh? Yeah, wouldn't take his time or anything. He'd go three back, two across, and he'd go straight in. <laughs> he's like, bro, take your time. Give your teammates some time. <laughs> have a rest. Yeah, he's sweet because yeah. he's nice and fresh. Yeah. <laughs> Cruising around. 
Um, bro, obviously, like, there's a lot of uh, players around. Like, say, say when I was playing, bro, 10 years ago, like, you basically had to be a football player. And I was into, like, weird, like, not weird, but, like, I was into reading books and taking photos and making videos. And obviously, YKTR come from that, which is cool. Who do you look around in the league um, beyond, like, just football and like, how they sort of move outside of it? As a guy's rolling into podcasts, as a guy's, like, Kalen starting their own brands. Is there any, or is it guys like Joey Joseph Manu who into like gaming? Um, there's so many options for you guys to do things like that. What sort of type of stuff that interests you outside? I love shoes, eh? So I love um, I love shoes. So I wouldn't mind starting something up to do with that. Yep. But um, you know, you see, um, like Nico doing his own podcast now. A few of the boys doing their own brand stuff. Like. It's really cool that we can do something else like that. Um, so I wouldn't mind trying getting in the shoes or something like that. Yeah. What's your best shoes you got? Best shoes I got? Probably yeah. Jordan 4 Torpedoes. Oh, well, they're my favourite anyway. Yeah. yeah so I reckon Jordan 4s are my favourite yeah. shoes. So I like the 4s and the 3s. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they're probably my favourite, the Torpedoes ones. Cool. I've got a few pairs of fours as well. Yeah. I was like you, bro, when I like when I was a football, I was just to be massive into shoes. Uh, Sporting News Australia, who put this podcast together, they done what's your the young fullbacks name? Oh, Keanu, yeah, yeah they done a um, segment with him. Yeah, eh? he's got some, he's got some heat, K. Okay? He's Skuck's little guy. <laughs> you got him, cu- you got him covered. Nah, nah, he's got me. He's got me. He's got some buy kicks. I love him, bro. It's addictive, eh? Yeah, yeah buying shoes. I remember I bought my first pair. And I was like, straight away, no, nah, I got to get another pair, <laughs> and it just kept going and going and going. But I had to had to slow down because no room in my room. <laughs> <laughs> but I think at my peak, bro, I had like eighty pairs of shoes. Yeah, I reckon I'm close to the forty at the moment. So um, slow down a little bit until until I get a walk-in wardrobe, then I can put them all there. Yeah, won't be long, bro. <laughs> uh, what's your thoughts on Sambas? Yeah, Sambas. You like them? Yeah, no, nah, they're all right. See, I'm with Adidas. Like for my boots and all that, but um, haven't really got many shoes. I've added us. You're a Nike, you're a Nike guy. Yeah, I love Nike. Um, I used to have a pair of uh, Superstars, added us Superstars. Yeah. And, um, had a few pairs of them, but I grew out of them. I might have to cop a cop another pair soon. On the on the Essex train yet? Nah, not me. <laughs> Too old. Yeah. Nah, I know. If, I know a few of the boys are on the New Balance train. Yeah. Getting all that stuff, but um, yeah, I'm mostly Nike. Bro, I, I ask a lot of football players this. Um, would you ever jump ship? To Union? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, wouldn't, I won't say no because you never know what happens. But, um, like, growing up, I was just footy. So um, I won't say no, but at the same time, I won't say yes. The hard part is, like, you look at the Wallabies and yeah. they haven't had much success. You know? yeah. Bro, they haven't been the All Blacks and the Bledisladen in 21 years. Yeah. It's almost like your whole life. So it's kind of hard to look over, bro. But they've got some pretty... Exciting opportunities coming up with like the Lions and the World Cups here in 2027. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just love to see if because I grew up in New Zealand, so rugby's huge. Yeah, yeah. And um, obviously, tight for a few of the Union boys, and obviously you got um hanging out with Quay the other day. So I just like to always ask that question, eh? Yeah, nah. So it'd be it'd be good to try something different, but at the same time, I love footy too much. So yeah. um, you never know what happens, though. So I won't <laughs> say no. Yeah. All right, my guy, Brass, I want to say keep the short and sharp and say thanks for jumping on. Appreciate your time. I know you're a little bit chill and, and like to do your own thing. So I uh, wish you nothing but success for next season and I'll be riding you home, my guy. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Thanks, my guy. <laughs>